Hello everyone! In today's tutorial video, we will be working with Arch Linux 2025 and the latest D5 Render plugin. D5 Render allows us to quickly and easily create photorealistic visuals. We can transfer the model from Arch NXP to D5 Render, and in this video we will go through each step of the process. Here you can see the final render. This is what we will be creating together today. Before we start, let's download D5 Render and the D5 Render plugin for Arch NXP. It is also important to check D5 Render's system requirements. Then, open Arch NXP and build your 3D model as usual. Place objects with a moderate number of surfaces, apply materials and textures, add lights, and save the necessary perspective views. If the plugin is installed, you will see the D5 Render button in the top menu. Click the Start button to send the 3D model to D5 Render. This will only work if the 3D view is active. The process may take a few minutes, depending on the size of the model. When the D5 Render dialog box appears, select New Project. D5 Render will then load the 3D model and import settings saved in Arch NXP, like the views, which are listed on the left. Clicking on any of them will show a preview and automatically navigate to the view. I will switch back to the Kitchen 01 view, which we will be working on. The program also imports the lights, shown as small icons and listed on the left. Besides the lights, this list also includes important objects. It also imports the materials and textures we set up in our XP, so there is no need to reassign them, unless we want to modify them. In today's video, we will go step by step through these modifications. Let's start with navigation. Clicking on different views will navigate us there automatically. You can also move freely by holding the right mouse button. Switching from orbit to fly mode lets you navigate the same way or you can use the keyboard. W left, A right, D backward, S forward, Q up, E down. You can also scroll with the mouse wheel to move forward and backward. If I return to the kitchen view, you will see the viewpoint height is set to 1.6 meters. If I move downward using the E key, the value changes accordingly. Now let's see how to save or update views. If we move away from the saved view, like kitchen 01, and click the Update Scene icon, the preview updates. New views can be created by clicking the plus button and you can rename them. Next, let's see how to sync a newly created view from Arch NXP. Go back to Arch NXP and create a new view, Kitchen 04. Then use the Sync Cameras command. Switch back to D5 Render and the new view appears. Now let's look at the Material Editing and the Material Library. D5 Render also includes a Material Library under the Asset Toolbar with various categories for models and materials. Even the free version offers a wide range, but a professional subscription gives you access to more content. If you want to filter out professional-only assets, you can display only the three ones, which we will use now. For example, I will apply a porcelain material to the back kitchen wall. After selecting it, I use the eyedropper to place it on the desired surface. If the same material is used on multiply surfaces, 
the program will update all of them at once. So, modifying one kitchen front updates them all. I undo this with Ctrl plus Y and press Escape to exit Material Placement. Next, let's look at syncing materials and the model from ArchNX3. If you change a material or delete an object in ArchNX3, it must be synced with D5 Render. Back in ArchNX3, I will delete a wall lamp and change the material of a kitchen cabinet. Then I sync both the materials and the model using the sync model command. These changes appear automatically in D5 render. Now I will change the curtain material. From the fabric category, I choose the white curtain material and place it using the eyedropper. With that, all material settings are ready. Let's move on to placing objects. In D5 Render, we have several ways to do this. We can use the built-in object library under Assets, Module menu. I will choose a vase and place it in the scene. If the size isn't right, for example, if the object is too large, you can scale it using the right-hand panel. Unlocking the padlock scales proportionally, Looking it allows independent scaling. Another option is to import and sketch up format objects like one downloaded from the 3D warehouse. I will switch to the living room view and place a downloaded object, a sofa. Click import to load the file. After importing, click on it to begin loading into the 3D model. Now I place it using the mouse. Then I adjust its position. You can rotate it using the semicircle markers and flip it using the flip command into the top right corner. I rotate it again to position it correctly. You can also fine-tune the placement along the axis. Red, forward, backward. Green, left, right. Blue, up, down. We won't need vertical movement this time. Using this method, any SketchUp format object can be easily imported into D5 Render. These important items appear under the Imported tab and in the Object list, like the vase or the sofa we just added. You will see also light sources here, which we will now discuss in more detail. Our next topic is syncing and placing light. I am switching back to the Kitchen 01 view. D5 Render automatically imports lights placed in ArchNXP. They also appear in the list on the left and can be turned on or off using the eye icon. I will leave them on for now and we will edit their properties on the right panel. If there aren't enough light sources in ArchNXP, return to the program and add more lights to the model. In ArchNXP 3D view, right click a lamp and select Lighting, Add and Edit Light Source. Click Add, choose a light from the list and place it inside the fixture. Repeat for the second lamp. Then sync the model, D5 Render will import this as well. Now let's adjust the light properties. Click on a light to access its settings. Light attribute, whether it is an IES light, intensity, cone angle, temperature. I will reduce the intensity of the top and bottom lights to avoid overexposure. I will also turn off the center light. 
With that, we finish syncing and configuring the imported lights. But I want to add more. Let's place an LED strip light under the upper cabinet. Press the Add Lights button and select Strip Light. Place it with the mouse, then use the axis to position it and the right panel to adjust its length. Let's add a second strip by duplicating the first one. Hold Shift and drag along the red axis to place it on the other side. Now it fits neatly in place. Switching back to Kitchen Zero One view, we can see that all necessary lights are now in place. Next we will set the background and sun for rendering. These are under the Environment menu. Use the sliders to adjust the north offset and skylight. To set a background image, select a built-in HDR from the HDRI options. This helps create different moods in the scene. I will choose Midday 02 and see what kind of result we get. If you want to use a custom HDR image, select Customize HDR and browse for your file. For example, I downloaded an HDRI image from the Polyhaven site, which I will use now. With a custom HDRI, you can also rotate the image using the slider and adjust its brightness. Once everything is set and you are happy with the result, it's time to render. Click the camera icon for render settings. You can still adjust the view here. I will move the camera a bit forward and hide the sofa so it doesn't block the view. Then I will set the render properties, for example the aspect ratio, I will choose 60 to 9, and preset size currently 2K. Click the render icon to start. Choose the folder and file name for the output. Clicking the Save button will start the rendering process. The duration depends on several factors, such as the complexity of the scene, the selected resolution, and, of course, the performance of your computer. Once the rendering is complete, you can open the folder containing the rendered image by clicking on the Open Folder button and view the final visual. This brings us to the end of today's tutorial video. I hope you find the presentation useful. Thank you for joining me. Have a great day. Goodbye.